right, welcome to Bloom in Full Color, where we live life in high definition. I'm Jennifer. I've got Dave and PJ with me. Today, we are talking about full bulbs. Fall bulbs. Fall bulbs. Full bulbs is what I said, wasn't it? Fall bulbs. B-U-L-B-S. And you want full ones, go. too, in case you're wondering. <laughs> you want full fall oh. bulbs, for sure. Oh, I just was happy that I was wearing a rust color and an orange chair today. That's well, just how it was going today. <laughs> I've got my uh, Coven's. Cold brew covens and coffins shirt on. Can you still see me? I'm all in green. I know. And Am so I like he. wall art? We are. We're mad. <laughs> no, we're I like looking. <laughs> you're you're not doing the like green screen effect. <laughs> my right. teal might be clashing though. I just. <laughs> I think we are kind of clashy. We're very today. clashy. That's all right. Yeah. We can be clashy. Um. All right. So today, what? So what always happens to us at the greenhouse in the spring is, the tulips and the daffodils and the crocus and the hyacinths start blooming, and people are like, ah. Oh, I really want tulip bulbs. And you're like, eh, that doesn't work. So we're here to talk about what is a fall bulb? Why do you plant it in the fall? And what's the whole mechanics behind that? Because oftentimes what you want when it's blooming is far past its bloom date unless you buy a fully mature plant at a garden center, which some people do. Some people can't afford. To say, we'd love to sell you that. But However, it doesn't. It doesn't work like that. There's another way. To, yeah, there's correct. A, it doesn't work like. That. There's always ways though that you can go about trying to grow a fall bulb where it's forced, and this is what a lot of the nurseries will do. Absolutely. Okay? So, Absolutely. Rather than putting it in the ground, that way it's ready come February. I still love when I color. walk through Costco and I see it in a vase. Absolutely. <laughs> and I'm like, what the hell? Well, they literally take those bulbs, they put them in there and they put them in a fridge mm-hmm. for weeks and weeks on mm-hmm. end. And then they bring them out and force them. Well, at a, at a form, and at it's a, not Costco that does that. I just want to be clear about that. They sell them to Costco like that. We had tulips and hyacinths at another company that I worked at. Okay. And we had seven truckloads of these bulbs in a reefer. Just a couple. For eight weeks. Okay. And then we would take them out in December at about the time that we've run out of point so seven. So you, he was the company yep. selling the yep. bases. Seven yeah. reefer trucks mm-hmm. for eight weeks solid. Oh my yep. gosh. Yep. This and then we would, and we would start trucks. planting them right after um, point set has got done. Yeah. Mm-hmm. And then we would take them to market in bloom or in bud. Breaking bloom yeah, in February, January, March, first part of February. And you were on coastal region during that. Absolutely. So the, so the timing's yeah. different yeah. in the coastal region. So yeah. I, I do want to yep. accentuate that. So our target window would be March here. Absolutely. To April, depending on cool spring versus warm spring. So, but but we're already talking about production. We should be telling these folks about normal planting yeah. and follow, okay. right? You so got, we're already selling I, them yeah. something. I, I want tulips. When do I shop for them? Right now. Right now. Right now. So, in fact, so October. So they start sending these catalogs in the middle of the summer. So yep. I, you start getting the stuff from the Netherlands in like June and July. Right. Expecting you're going to place an order sometime in August, September. You're going to be planting them in the ground, October, November, around here. Correct. So you're going to want to get them in the ground before the ground freezes. Well. And you're going to want to follow correct. the instructions on the packet. Absolutely. So let's take it back even a step further for those that aren't really familiar with bulbs. Okay. Yes. When are these bulbs harvested and where are they harvested? Where are these bulbs coming from? First and foremost, for the most part. So tulips, they're usually calling coming from Holland. That's right. And actually a and whole bunch of those bulbs. They're being Holland. harvested in May and June. Mm-hmm. And in then fact, they're sent over here in the summer, right? Really right. bitching videos. If you want to go see, if you want to get excited about somebody mowing down acre after acre of gorgeous <laughs> yeah. tulips you'll lose your mind but yeah. right they That's grow they works. grow them to flowers That's how that they works. literally got to yeah. go and mow the flowers off so they can then harvest the bulbs right. so they can be dried sorted and then shipped to us for fall planting so 100% okay so let me let me give you a little tulip history too are right, you ready for this michael Pollan is an author he wrote botany of desire mm-hmm. that was about four of the biggest plants that have changed the world it was potatoes apples cannabis and tulips right so the tulip there was a virus in the tulip that in this tulip in question it actually created a bicolor bloom that one tulip with a virus was worth more than a house in value crazy right it sounds exactly like plants it sounds I'm exactly the, the $10, like plants leaves, we'll talk I'm, oh I'm, I'm absolutely no yeah you know what 100%. i'm talking about right so before people really understood the genetics and, you know, the different things in plants and could, they were cross pollinating plants to get, you know, desirable traits, Right. but this was a virus. And so it, it, they had never created a bicolor bloom and a tulip. And so it was such high value that it was worth more than 
buying a home in Holland back then. I would assume that would push the focus to the science side of it too. Oh, All of a sudden, 100%. you'd be hiring science yep. to recreate or or to do more with viruses, right? Because if you're if that one's worth a house, I want the other one that's worth another house. Kind of <laughs> did right, and I want to have Plant breeders, the cornerstone on it. Absolutely. I mean, there's something to be said for a desirable trait, which is usually a mutation, right? And a and- virus in this case, created a mutation. And typically, and again, we get, we're plant people, but the way and that's done is nerds. by physical selection. <laughs> you go to the corn patch, you pick the tallest corn, you pick the biggest ears, those are the seeds you then right. carry an extra. So it's right. Right. typically it's done by it's not physical everybody. selection. It's not a virus, right? It's I'm going to pick the best, prettiest, best smelling, whatever. So it's interesting yes. that you'd be, I'm on the hunt for a virus. I know. Uh, yeah. Literally, weird, like right? it would completely change. Yeah. Yeah. So going back, so you have, Six to eight weeks from the time that the bulbs are harvested. Okay. Okay. Uh, and then they show up on the store shelves or in mail order. All right. Yep. So now you've got them. You've gone to the store. What's the first thing you should do? I've Bums. gone to the store. Well, so you've gone to the, the store. You've purchased I, them. You've purchased, purchased them. You've brought them home. I've come home. You are excited about next year to seeing these bulbs. I clear my flower beds where I want to find them. <laughs> no. No? no? I don't nope. think so because... No. What I believe, bulbs, you want to put in late enough so you don't get this season's growth, right? So you don't run out to the garden and plant them immediately. You really are looking well, for a proper Well, because it's supposed timing. to be 81 today. Ex- right. Kind and of the point. It's October right. 9th. Kind of the point. It's a you, little warm. You don't want these things cracked and growing because right. only no. to die down okay. in the winter. So I'm following you. Take so them probably home. put them in the fridge. Put them in the refrigerator. Yes. Or if you've got a refrigerator out in the garage. Yep. You know, the last they thing you want cool are your children. Dry. Uh, what are these and are they edible? <laughs> you know. So, yeah. Put them out there. Nobody's kids will touch them. I was they like, look like my vegetables. My children were not. <laughs> they won't touch them. And they're like, why'd you put the onions in the fridge? Mom? Yes, exactly. And your onions <laughs> look funny. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> they're not the right shape. So, right. That's exactly right. right. Because, again, the timing of these things is important. You're looking for, we call it vernalization in the business, right? They have to be cooled. You're faking a winner when right. you do it in the greenhouse. Correct. It's called what, vernalization. What he just said is putting yeah. them in the reefer for two months. That's the equivalent of you planting them and letting them stay in your garden over the winter. That's right? the only way they'll bloom. Correct. That's right. Mo- a lot of, in fact, well, a lot of the things we grow, surprisingly, here, which don't count bulbs, also have to have vernalization for us any to get per- blooms. Any perennial. So we actually plant the perennials in the summer for the next year. So that we can vernalize, fake a winter, so they'll bloom the first year for the consumer. Right. So if you don't put them in the refrigerator, <laughs> food. If, if you're if you're lazy, uh, I would be, and my wife would probably be upset if I'm putting them in the refrigerator anyhow. Right. Okay? Right. Take Where else space. can you put them? I would say garage, garage, somewhere cool in a shady and dark, area. Right? dry. You don't want moisture. That's right. Right. You want them nice and cool and dark. Right. Think of it. It's basically it's a it's a well it's a it's a bulb. It's an onion. It's something. It's a thing of food crop. You don't want to rot before right. you touch it. Right. Right. So super dry, super cool. Fridge is best because this is something that enjoys the cold. Right. Right. So the next maybe uh, myth on a, on a bulb is, okay, I've taken them out of the refrigerator. Should I soak them for a few days? Mm, I say no. I say no as well. I, I feel like you're that- going to compromise the bulb and put mm-hmm. it so that there's mm-hmm. moisture in it. And right. then you're creating a mold situation. Mm-hmm. Thank you for mm-hmm. letting me step out. We have a pumpkin, everything pumpkin podcast next. And we have uh, one of our dishes was ready in the freezer. Wonderful. So in you don't, the freezer, in the so you don't need <laughs> to soak them when you're ready to plant. Go ahead and plant them. Now, the key is after you've planted them, of course, water them in so the soil gets used to it. But you don't need to soak them because soaking is not going to do anything. And if you leave them in too long, if you forget about it, we're all, we all lead busy lives, right? Absolutely. You know, a week or two has gone by and it's like, oh crap, these are gone. You know, I also feel like soaking was an anti pesticide wash back in the day. And I feel like our grandmothers were like, you got to soak it because, (laughs) uh, because it like they came out of the garden with a rust on them or, or some kind of a plant disease. And so the old wives tale was, you know, either bleach or add, they had, they had something to add to the water to do this. And it was for the, and I feel and like n- some modern good, stuff is not, the, those those, right. those diseases don't come on anymore. Well, and there's some good old wives' tales and there's some really terrible oh, ones. <laughs> <laughs> you know, knee high by 4th of July for your corn. Okay, I can get down with that. But there's some of them like you go outside and you're going to get a cold. It's not actually like that. It's right. a virus. Right. <laughs> so well, I think that's where the soak stuff came from. And you typically you really don't have to. The stuff that we're buying in or bringing into the country has to be pesticide or disease free to come in, right? They're not letting them ship right. yeah. fungus right. in from the Netherlands. That's right. So you're buying clean. Everything's controlled by the Department of Agriculture, whether that's USDA or the ISDA. 
And, and I would say if you're buying from a reputable source, which is which is That's we're, we're going straight. Right. So right. let's talk about reputable sources because I know we've just been talking picking on tulips, but you also have daffodils, you also have hyacinths, hyacinth. you have iris. also have crocus, mm-hmm. iris, Rose. peonies. That's another one. Technically, that comes as a bulb. Yes, it does because we're buying peonies because we announced that on the podcast. Yes, Nobody <laughs> else knows because we haven't put our catalog out. So you are the first people to know. Second time, second time, second time. This is the second, second time we're mentioning it, but. <laughs> We have to buy those bulbs and plant them now to finish them in the spring because they are an April bloomer. Right. So you have to, but the kicker about a peony bulb is, or peony, peony, it depends, to apple, or tomato, tomato, if it's not apple, <laughs> they're red. <laughs> That's all I got going on. Um, we did three to five eye. So there's, a, there's an eye issue. So how many eyes you have on a bulb It's a more expensive bulb because it's a more mature bulb, but it's going to put off more. So we put more input into the bulb so we get a better plant. Bulbs are really cool because they require a single or maybe two waterings. That is it. And those are typically in the fall shortly after you plant, just like Dave said. You you always water in a bulb after you plant to settle the ground or eliminate... Um, air pockets, right? You really want everything to settle in, and the the moisture is supposed to wake and the bulb up. Snow is your friend. All of the above. Exactly because right. snow is an insulator. Yeah, insulation. Absolutely. It's going to insulate the ground, and it's going to provide moisture for the plant that does not compromise the bulb. Typically, now, if you have a really, really wet kind of warm winter where there's just a lot of running moisture, that might be where the same thing soaking in a bulb or in a bowl. The old wives' tale, right. you're creating that in the ground. You're not going to be able to control Mother Nature. Believe nope. you me, we've tried. <laughs> we try to call in all the bribes that we can on a cold spring. It just doesn't work like that. So you are you are at the mercy of Mother Nature still. So should I consider bulbs? I live downtown. I've got a squirrel population. Mm, and my let's wife, talk about and that. And my wife yep. uh, feeds into that. Mm. You know, so, yep. you know, we have I want to talk about mice, too. All over. Yes, you know. Bulls. So... Should I just give up on bulbs and say, I'm not going to do it because I have squirrels and they're going to eat them? No. What you could do, say if you lived downtown and you had like a cold storage area that was dry and cold. I'm talking about once I get them in the ground and, and they're blooming. They're, they're, they're coming up now. We're so next spring. spring. Time. Next spring. So I'm hoping you have a trick to keep them out, because, <laughs> which I'm, I'm going to wheedle you for. squirrels go them. after bulbs? Yes, they, they will dig them well, right up. They, 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 they do, attacked my pumpkins. I don't they do on did. some. Yeah. But. If you do a crocus or a daffodil, they're not going to touch them. They're those. not going to touch them because it has that oily yeah. and it's a poison to them. So, so go was, hog wild. You know, know, we, we learned this year Plectranthus, one of the plants that we grow here and, and sell. Animals don't like that. They freaking hate it yeah. is what they do. So I'm also wondering if if you had an area that was bulb heavy and you and, and you had problems, if you couldn't intermix the, that ooh, with some of our perennials. There you go. Right. Plectranthus is there a perennial. A very strong smell. Right. It has a really distinct odor. But we found it would it kept the um rock chucks away from some things and supposed to be a bunny type. Well, you could something. say the same thing is about onions and garlic, uh, marigolds, nasturtium, all of those are pest deterrent. So so, so if you are struggling with you're looking with for these, a pest deterrent, whether yeah, that's might, animal or um crawling. Right. Doesn't matter. Uh, you're looking for a pest deterrent. Yep. Yep. So like I used to live out in the country here, right next to the greenhouse, and I always wanted bulbs. Well, the mice love tulip bulbs. <laughs> mm-hmm. They do not love daffodil bulbs. Right. And by golly, I had a wonderfully healthy daffodil mm-hmm. um, population. I even tried to plant the tulips in a circle and then the daffodils around them. <laughs> Didn't work. Uh, they just did crawl <laughs> yeah. under or over. Um, yeah. I haven't figured that out yet. I live in town now, but I've been eradicating the mature landscape of my home. Refreshing. You're refreshing. Uh, no, the no. Eradicating <laughs> the mature landscape of evergreens and spider everything. And daffodils, like you would not believe. There was some pretty bulbs, um, but they were really inconsistent. They had probably been put in 40, 50 years ago and forgotten about. Right. It is really what had happened because nobody lived in my home for a good 20 years. Really? Yeah, it's a one owner home. Wow. And there was sat empty for 20 years. And my address is 420. So it was the like stoners would break in and smoke in the house. And then they had to uh, net over the top of all of the, um, the chimneys because the squirrels would break in and have parties and right. the neighbors and no could see all the squirrels. Them. So we've had to, we found some funny things that were like, huh, this is a little weird. Well, it, they just, the home sat empty. And when, 
the caretaker moved in, that's when the home went down. And then when the owner did die, they gave, they gifted the home um, to the grandchildren and the grandchildren then sold it. And the caretaker and all the miscellaneous family members they had moved out and we had to gut it. Hmm. So hmm. it was it was an adventure. So the landscape actually was taken care of pretty well, but there's a ton of evergreens and there's a ton of bulbs and there's things that you don't want. And then there's a there's a row of lilacs that are just trash um, because they were never cared for. They were probably really beautiful when they were put in, and the front one still Before looks really good. Before it was completely good. shaded out. But, too. yeah, and mm-hmm. I have this beautiful 80-year-old birch that is gorgeous in my yard. Now I'm starting to have a disease issue on one mm. side, so now I'm having to deal with that. We had a spruce fall down. And so you're going to, I mean, you could move into a home, too. Say you buy a house now. You're not going to know if there's fall bulbs. Correct. You're going to be discovering things yeah, as, spring, as like, the, right. and then what if you have summer bulbs? Right. So, okay, let's talk about fall bulbs you put in the fall. So that's anything that you're going to see blooming pretty much February through April. Yes. Planting, Is that yeah, accurate? The early season. Season. So mm-hmm. when does it become a spring bulb? I, well, spring bulbs. You're probably you're look, planting it in March. You're, yeah, March. I mean, you're looking at your gladiolas. Your da- if dahlias. You, if you've missed your dahlias. tulips, you can also get tulips in at that time. Yep. Okay. Your, but your yes. canna lilies, yeah. your calla lilies. So those are all spring bulbs. Right. So heat, so the heat loving too. Heat so think loving, about all that, everything we just talked about. So they're stuff not, that, not going to come in that stuff late that blooms May, in May and June. April, right. or May and June. Yep. I should say May, yep. June, and July. Yep. And I will say in this area, fall bulb planting mm. is right around Halloween. Yep. You're late enough. You're not going to get any growth. It's still early enough. The right. ground is not frozen. Right. And and to be fair, what we're actually looking for in bulbs is a little bit of root establishment before the cold, cold of the winter. So you're really trying to get and and to be fair, bulbs will or all plants, not just bulbs. All plants continue their growth until the ground freezes solid. That's right. So if you put a bulb in in, in around Halloween, it's going to put root growth out until sometime in December where the ground gets really cold. Again. So you're just setting yourself up for perfect. And then to me, that late in the season, dude, there'll be no issues of it growing. You're not going to get any top growth. Same time of year we plant garlic. The reason that, that, that this timing is specific. If you want garlic, big, beautiful garlic is a fall bulb. So we're talking about fall bulbs. So I'm going to so jump in here quickly. Cl- clarification then okay. while we talk about fall bulbs, because I want to know when the right time to plant an onion set is too. Okay. Onion sets are springtime stuff. They don't need to go into the ground early. So onion set, so and an onion what a set, set is, is, is a yeah. one-year-old onion. That's about the size of a ping pong ball. Yep, yeah, ish. or a quarter. Or can be. Or depends, a quarter, yeah. Right? I've seen different sizes. Yeah. And I think it depends on the color, because I swear whites are a little bit bigger than, say, reds. Well, or... and we're in the state of Idaho. Right. So allium is a protected agriculture yes, crop. So if you go to a local garden center, they have to get it from a certified Idaho source. Yep. So there's one, uh, and it's I, I Magic Valley... Are... Early. Magic Valley Growers over in Wendell. Yep. So that's where almost any of your onion sets that you're going to find anywhere in Southern Idaho are going to come from. Right. So onion or uh, uh, garlic is a fall bulb. You, 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 what, hopefully what you're doing is going to go to the last farmer's market of the season, or if it's already not passed, I think it it's, already did. Uh, no. Yeah, or is it this more. weekend? Yeah, this more. weekend. Yep. So you, you want to go to a farmer's market, you want to get some locally grown garlic. And you, the reason is that is it's not been sprayed with any kind of not, growth hormone right yeah. typically well there's two things almost all the grocery store garlic we buy is soft knit garlic which is southern growers okay you can grow it here right. but it's not for northern growth so you want to go buy something local because it's typically will be hard knit garlic which is what we grow in the north and then it won't be sprayed with anything right and garlic is really cool because garlic will morph into just specific to your land so if you just keep growing garlic, it will turn into Jennifer's garlic. It is a very terroir <laughs> thing. It's just like grapes, right? Grapes or different wines taste good because of the you where have it's a grown. A lot of faith in me as a gardener. So thank you for that. <laughs> the reason so garlic people is- expect me to be a good gardener, and that is not always the case. And garlic is on the list. But it's so easy. Onions are Fall too. Fall bulbs are so easy because, like I was trying to say, there's two times you got to touch it, and then it, it's literally untouched. So you put fall garlic in in, in Halloween. You maybe water one time to settle what you've planted, and then you do not touch it again until but, next okay. summer. Okay, so I'll I'll just admit where my skill set is. I'm really good at high maintenance stuff. Right. Um, if it needs to be ignored, I suck at it. So <laughs> root crops, I can kill a succulent like it's a job. Um, same with a cactus. Um, I'm real bad at it. Uh, yeah. So garlic is tough for me now. Perennials put them in and ignore them. I'm really good at that. Right. Because it's on a sprinkler system. 
Yeah, it's already it's true. plug and play. I can walk away. Mm-hmm. To ask me if I have a powdery mildew over my entire yard. Yes. <laughs> yes. yes. My perennial down. garden has powdery mildew. It's had too much moisture. Gotcha. Oh, it's a good thing I know an irrigation specialist is going to help me. Working on that. There you go. <laughs> so at the end of the season, uh, another myth, if you will. Should I take these bulbs out or just leave them? Just well. Depends, depends on, on what bulb. you're trying to do with them. And it if depends it's on the a canna lily, if it's a dahlia, if it's uh, if it's if it's the an annual, season. pull it out. If the, it's a perennial, leave it alone. The cool, the cut grass, it back. The iris, this mm-hmm. stuff, you can put it in and never leave it. Now, with that being said, thinning still helps them. Yes, it does. Right. So much like a onion or a shallot, they tend to grow in big clumps on a lot of them, and you can actually take those and spread them out a little bit and make a little bit bigger display and right. kind of and shoot. So you could play with them if you want it, but you certainly don't have to. Correct. Right? You, you can just leave them alone. They'll come up and sprout and do beautiful. A lot of well, in fact, we plant them here at mm-hmm. the Moss Green Houses. Well, we'll typically do is we'll come in and we'll add the annual flowers around them. Right. Yeah. So about right. the time the daffs are going away and and something, then our annuals are now coming. Yeah. And, and all we do is flowers. just cut them to the ground and leave yep. them in there yep. so we can ignore yep. them. Exactly. Yeah. That's kind of the way we do it. I mean, just make it easy. And then you can put pansies and kale and stuff in the fall that'll bloom in the spring. And there's tons of stuff you can do so you get that spring color. And why that's important is because Easter is kind of that time where people are bringing the family back to the house. They're doing a celebration, and that usually falls in March to April. This next year, 2024, it's on March 31st. That's Easter? So, yep. That's early. Wow, early. real early. Early next year. No, <laughs> well, that's I mean, about mid-range, if you ask me. Is it really? Easter? Well, because Easter can be like May 15th or March 15th to like April 20th. Ish. Is it really that early? I yeah, think. because like we've had Easter's be on April 17th. We've right. had Easter's be on April 1st. <laughs> we've had them on March 20th. You know, it just depends. And I think it has to do with Catholic Lent. I would say it has a religious yeah. something. Yeah, there's it. some. And you are not talking to the right crowd, talking no, to the three right. of us. So I, I do not know the history. If I went and asked somebody down here, I could definitely get the huh. answer. But <laughs> I don't know. And I will candidly say it's not important to me. So I'm not going to hold space for that. Um. What I say is what is important to us is spring is kind of dictated by Easter. Right. People don't really feel comfortable buying flowers until there's a reason. Easter is kind of coming into a new season. It's the uh, rebirth of Jesus, you know, because it is a religious holiday. So th- it's all about new growth and rebirth, right? Very spring. It's very yep. springy. Very and so spring we do things. lean very heavy into that holiday because we need to. It's kind of the the start to the season. So it's important to think about the Easter and kind of how that falls. So we're always thinking March 31st is next year. So can you, this because I don't know, and you are the uh, garlic expert here on the panel, can you plant garlic and your other bulbs in the same area or do you need to separate them out? Um, I don't see why you wouldn't. I don't it, think it's it would exactly hurt it. the same cultural pr- Put them in the ground, water them in, put some kind of cover. So garlic bulbs, they want a little bit of compote leaves or grass clippings or something. This is like on top of the in. snow, a little bit of mulch. It just helps keep the moisture level more consistent throughout the wintertime. Idaho, we can have those winters where you get no water or no rake, moisture Rake your yard, but don't rake your beds. Right. That's really kind of my rule. But can you, plant, can you plant daffodils? And I don't see why not. And everything sure. all together. I don't yeah. know why not. Sure. I mean, I don't know why you would, but if, you you, might if you've have got only so much de- space, you, you know, might have different depth needs. That'd true. be the one thing I would factor for. So different bulbs are going to be in a different depth. I mean, you're going to put a tulip. What is it? A foot down? I don't. Think I don't. Yeah, I don't. Eight inches. Is it that much? Yeah, it's like I went too deep. Because they got the, they've got those little bulb. Oh yeah, yeah. The yeah. put. I know exactly what you're talking about. Versus garlic, you're only going to put down. A couple, uh, a couple inches. It's true. A little different depth. So, but I don't know why you couldn't plant one right next to each other. You just right have depth. to factor for depth. You're not going to be able to dig one hole, throw it all in. No. Is what I'm saying. No, and in fact. And, and, and you need to have the bulb facing a certain way, right? So I, yeah, 100%. So all then of these there's the other thing. Yep. So timing, depth, and where the bulb is placed and what air, how it's placed. And I will tell needs you. Needs the right side up. Bulbs are a rejuvenator. <laughs> And by that, I mean, if you are breaking fresh ground, one of the first things they tell you to plant is bulbs. Right. Right. So bulbs will help you loosen up. That's true. Hard dirt. Bulbs are a wonderful companion planting with almost anything. In fact, they say first year orchards, plant daffodils at the bottom of your apple trees, plant irises around the bottom. 
it's it's a companion planting. It helps wake up the ground. Right. It, it helps get the bugs and that the, the cool stuff that we want active. So to me, bulbs are a rejuvenator all on their own. That section in the back you've been wanting to turn into a flower bed, plant fall bulbs in it this year. When you go to plant some of our beautiful spring annuals you're going to come by from us in March or April when you're ready, that bed will be a little more loose and a little more open, a little more inviting to the plants if there's daffodils. and Because and, and, they've already broken the soil. They've broken the ground. Yeah. They've woken up. the new. They, they, they're getting nutrients going. They've, they've got the bug population going. It is a, like a starter. And you got to start that spring bed in the fall when you're not so busy, when it's not. Okay. Right? So it, it's a really cool way to kind of save you a step in right. spring. I think another thing to look at, uh, we've been talking about daffodils and tulips and the such. Some more beautiful flowers in that bulb sta- in that bulb category. Okay, ranunculus. Okay, and anemones. We don't grow anemones here. Oh, but and, and beautiful, um, beautiful flowers. And so many different hellebores, hellebores, which we played with a yeah. little bit. I want to grow hellebores, <laughs> but here's a kicker: nobody's ready to buy plants when hellebores are in bloom. That oh, you guys ask why we same problem, right? yeah you guys ask why we don't grow those things. Nobody buys them because it's too early. They're afraid timing to. Thing. It's a timing thing. It's, I wish we could. One of my I favorite really plants in the garden in Southern Idaho is evening primrose or Mexican evening primrose. It's Monotera. stunning. It will take over the whole garden. Yep. We can't grow it because it doesn't it's, flower up till about June. Right. So about the mm-hmm. time we're closing we used, the shop, we used to it's coming it. on color. We used to grow it. Yeah. I feel um, about it was, it was probably had, a tough sell. We, yeah, it, was it just is. Green well, it is. Early. So, yeah. and there's a lot of crops that we'll actually put to bed for a little while and then bring back. Right. So Onothera, uh, if you, if it's something that you're going to look to grow, beautiful flowers, but it is invasive. So it, it is. totally will. It'll take. <laughs> I planted a single four inch cup twenty years ago. Yeah. It has the entire front of my house, which yeah. I'm good with, but yeah. it will take over. So. It's kind of like the dogwoods at my parents. They didn't plant one of those. Those that red was, twigs. That was the birds. They wow. did not plant one. Yep. You see how big oh, that. Oh, see, they head. knocked yep. me off the mower. Right. <laughs> Get out of here! <laughs> not one of those were planted by wow. my parents. Not one. So there are invasive things. So certain bulbs, be a little careful. Um, others, if you need to fill a spot, you need to decide how invasive it is if you want it in that spot. I mean, there's but some it's not that, too late for this. I was going to say, yeah. it is, you're on time, right? You're, you're getting right on the border, time. but go online. I love seeing these ball, these bulb catalogs. They're gorgeous. And you'll see stuff you've never even heard of before. Right. Also, comes as a bulb. I do want to well, speak to, yeah. I do want to speak to, if you find the cheapest bulbs, there's probably a reason they're cheap. Ooh, I was going to give you yeah, a good hack, a local um, hack. I okay, let's hear okay, a local good hack. local hack for bulbs. Go down and visit Thanksgiving Point in oh. Salt Lake City, who plant it's actually in hundreds Lehigh of thousands of bulbs every year. Correct. She'll Lehigh tell you and what. Draper. But yep. what they do is they go and dig those bulbs up out of the ground after the bulb festival in the spring right. and then sell them to customers until they're gone. And they all come gone. from Holland and right. they're all incredible it, varieties. It's the best and pricing it's a grab you'll and ever go. see. It's you have no idea ever. what color they're going to be. Or even what they are. I think it's it just It doesn't a matter. Box of it's bulbs. just a yeah. box of bulbs. I would recommend that like every day. Like a tenth the price. I'm not picking. Ooh, the, one of the reasons you'll see a bulb, they're crazy expensive. And I mean, they want two or three or four dollars a bulb and they sell my packages of 10. And you're that's one color of one something. They're yeah, a little expensive. Like, what it's not a mix. They can, is, yeah. they can be. But down here, like you said, it's the yeah. cheapest bulbs. When you're supporting local, go see their bulb festival. You want to see a, a yeah, great example. Yeah, go down to April down to what Thanksgiving Point with, or Ashton Gardens. Yes. Yeah, Ashton, 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 Gardens. Ashton Gardens. That's what it's called. At but Zach, would, producer, if you can find some video uh, that you can insert during that, that, that thing. That would be oh, really cool. Yeah, because it's, it's incredible. It's one of a kind. Um, I would say if it's really cheap, I'm, I'm not picking a Walmart because that's really convenient for a lot of us. Um, sometimes that's Dangerous. not your best option. So it's okay if you spend a little bit more at Lowe's or DMB or your local garden center, depending on where you can find it and be picky. You spend two more bucks a package sometimes is going to be the difference between you having blooms or no blooms in the spring. This is a perennial plant. So this isn't something you're going to enjoy for one or you're two investing. months. I mean, you're investing. It's going to come back. Gonna be, it's going to come sexy back. sexy and come back. So like yep. don't yeah. be too, too cheap. All right. So we encourage you pick a spring bulb or excuse me, a fall bulb, bulb and put it out there. And with that, we are going to invite you to continue to live life in full color because plain is pretty boring. Um, stay tuned for our next episode. We're going to be talking about everything pumpkin. And I am getting hungry because I can smell it. <laughs> She's wearing the pumpkin shirt, too. So, yeah, yeah. Yes. All right. And with that, guys, we wish you a good... Oh, and if you like this episode, please subscribe, follow, share on all of the, all, on all of the uh, streaming platforms. And with that, we'll see you in the next episode. Happy fall. Bye.